A couple of weeks back, I was invited to London to the Shard, where I was able to play Total War Three Kingdoms at a press event a little bit early, which was incredibly exciting, and I had such a good time there. Thank you once again for CA for inviting me, but in this video, the embargo has dropped, so we're able to release what I recorded. I was able to play about two and a half hours-ish of the campaign and the battles. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is telling you a little bit of an overview of the game, some new features and things like that, then obviously in the background will be game play that I recorded or some of the b-roll that they also send us of the campaign and the battles then what I'm gonna do is talk a bit about what I actually played when I was there and what I was thinking when I was there and now looking back my thoughts on the game itself so let's get straight into the video Total War Three Kingdoms is set in ancient China during the Three Kingdoms era. I played the campaign and battles as a humble, virtuous, and kind Liu Bei, with help from his sworn brothers Zhang Fei and Guan Yu. The ultimate goal in this game is to become the Emperor of China, to become the ruler that unifies the whole of this land under your banner, making sure that you have provinces working well, your economy is stable, with of course being able to supply not only the people in it, but of course your armies as well. But I'll come on to a a bit later because there's quite a few different dynamics when it comes to the economy and especially your armies and how they can maneuver around the map with some limitations and some more strategical thought that you're gonna have to put into it in order to do it successfully but of course in order to become emperor and unify China it will take a lot of fighting diplomacy and rising through the ranks of the army you'll have to create and destroy military and economical alliances along your way and using your heroes to lead your armies to victory I'm going to be talking a little bit about the heroes later, but I feel like this is the biggest, and in my opinion, one of the most successful changes to Three Kingdoms and the Total War series in general, and I hope that they're able to take this on further when it comes to other Total War games. I think Total War Warhammer was a big stepping stone because it sort of made CA realise that historical accuracy isn't 100% what matters in their game. It showed that fantastical elements are possible. And now you may be thinking, what do you mean? Is this not historically accurate? Well, it is, but there's a difference with this game. There isn't just one campaign, there's two different campaign modes. And I'll get onto them a little bit later, and that will hopefully explain what I'm talking about. But let's talk about one of the biggest changes in Three Kingdoms. This is the characters throughout the game. They can be aligned with a faction, but they may choose to leave if they don't like the way it's been rung or the members in it. This means that they're available to persuade and recruit into your own factions, and you can use them to their advantage. They'll, of course, might leave your factions and join, but this makes these heroes and characters not just part of a faction. They're not just these drones that you can recruit in a faction and that's all they are they have their own lives they can make their own story and carve their own path throughout the world of the three kingdoms campaign and you're going to have to be able to use them to your advantage whether you can get them on your side or maybe you fight against them if that's what you want to do but if used correctly they can be extremely powerful allies and extremely dangerous enemies they can forge friendships and rivalries with other characters and switch alliances whenever they choose to there's a new sort of addition to the campaign map and this is talking about ambush battles but what do you mean ambush battles were always in the game well yes but ambush battles have changed and i think this is a really cool mechanic i've been playing rome 2 total war a lot and this is something that i think would really help in that game as well and now that they're bringing it into three kingdoms i think that this is a great addition to the ambush battles because everybody knows when you're in an ambush battle, you have an extreme disadvantage. You can't really auto-resolve these battles because you'll almost 90% of the time lose them. So when you're in the battles, you have to win it. There's no choice. You can't run away. In Three Kingdoms, they're adding in an extraction point feature. This means that when you're ambushed, in other total wars, you must defeat the enemy in the battle to win. But now the extraction point feature means there's an escape. So winning in combat might not be possible. You might be so outnumbered that you know you're not going to win this. Well, there's another option now. If you can manage to outmaneuver the attackers, you can now extract your characters and maybe even some of your army off at a certain point in the map. This will be a point marked where if you can get there first, you can actually run away and get out. Now, of course, it's extremely risky, but sometimes it can pay off for the better. If you know you're not going to win this battle, maybe leaving some men to hold off the enemy while the rest of your army escape and the rest of your characters, that might be better so they can live to fight another day but let's go on to the two campaign game modes that I was talking about now of course there's classical which is the normal total war game mode this is the normal very historical total war game mode where you play it as you would normally play there's not really massive changes except from the small things like like supplies and population and the new ambush stuff that's all in there but I'll get onto those smaller changes later. But the biggest change is the romantic one, which is the same as classical, but with a slight difference. These characters and heroes are extremely strong. Some may say overpowered, but if you know how to counter them, they're not so much. 
But what are these heroes? Well, we're going to be talking about the romantic mode. In the classical mode, they're just like normal generals. But in the romantic mode, the heroes, when you're on the battlefield, they can choose to duel other heroes on the battlefield. And my god, the animations are absolutely gorgeous. I think this is one of my favorite parts of the game, just looking at the animations of people flipping around. Something that we've never really seen in a Total War game before, but I just think it looks so awesome. I mean, the AI can also offer you duels on the battlefield. When you have your character, you can click a button which says duel, and then you can choose which general of the the enemy that you want to offer a duel with now they can reject it or they can accept it but ai can also do that vice versa you can reject or accept their offers to duel depending on what their offer was because of course if they offered to put their champion dueling your strategic hero you might want to decline that because you're probably going to lose that it's best to put your warriors or champion heroes in duels not your strategic type heroes because they're going to get absolutely demolished there's so many times in the gameplay that I actually played when I went to the event that I was so heavily outnumbered by the enemy but I was able to win the battles and not even just about win the battles but by quite a long way because I used my heroes to my advantage. Yes, in the example shown I positioned my guys on top of the hill which also gave me an advantage and I had superior archers which meant that I was absolutely able to demolish them as they slowly walked up the hill but I also used my heroes to the fact that I used my strong champion against their weaker generals which meant that in a one-on-one -on -one combat i was able to kill their generals having a massive morale hit to the enemy so when the enemy actually did come up against my army even though my army was smaller in numbers they couldn't hold their own because the morale had been hit so much by me killing their general at the beginning in a duel once you're in a duel though it can't be interrupted unless someone dies or run away from the duel now heroes in the romantic mode can also hold their own against whole units sometimes being just as strong or sometimes even more powerful than a whole enemy unit depending on what type of hero it is so sometimes you can hold down a whole unit while the rest of your army flanks with just one of your generals now going back to the classical mode the heroes in that are pretty much just like normal generals on the battlefield but let's talk a little bit about my thoughts on the game what did i experience when i played it and what do i think you guys should look out for well first off please Please do not judge my gameplay skills. I know I was terrible when I was playing this. Rome 2 I've about got the hang of and I'm pretty good at that now but this was a bit of a learning curve in terms of the economy and how the whole thing works. The economy has a new different style to it. There's different places in the province that you have to capture now. It's not just the cities and the towns and things. I mean there's whole new certain priority points. For example you can take over mines in order to get more resources from mines and money and things like that and also farms in order to get a boost in food. It's not just in the town you can build farms in the town and you just you don't actually see it, there's actually dedicated farms that you can attack and take over in order to give you a boost in that. There's new things called supplies being added in. You need to keep constant supplies to your army, otherwise they will take massive hits to them if they don't have the food and supplies in order to carry on going. So traveling far away from your land with an army is a lot harder. But it also means you're able to use it against the opponent if you know what you're doing. I didn't really, so basically it just hurt my armies because I tried to go too far away and attack places that weren't really close and I didn't have the supplies to keep it going. Now, talking about the population this is something that really matters in the game now apart from the normal population advantages that you get in the other total war games when your army is depleted when you put it in the city then they'll use some of that population to replenish your units now i have to say the game looks absolutely gorgeous i think it is a really big step up from other total war games in terms of graphical fidelity but especially the lighting it looks so nice and on the campaign map and battles they've now added in day and night cycles to the campaign map which seems like such a small thing but that hasn't been in a total war before and it just adds to the whole immersion as the sun sets and the sun rises as a night comes in it doesn't really change anything but it looks gorgeous now i think my favorite part like i mentioned before is playing as the heroes in the battles of romantic mode seeing them duel together seeing the amazing mocap animations that they've put in i really adds to the whole fantastical history of this time period how people fought and how people lived with a whole fantastical element in the three kingdoms of course i do really like the ambush extraction mechanic adding in a lot more to the point where you're able to decide if you sacrifice some of your men instead of just getting absolutely demolished if you're able to get there you're able to save quite a few of your guys as well now there of course can be some similarities and parallels to shogun but i do feel like overall this is a massive step forward in the total war franchise and i absolutely love this game now the game of course is being released on the 7th of march 
2019, which I think is going to be absolutely incredible. It has the normal game modes, such as campaign with single and co-op as well. There'll also be the single and multiplayer custom battles that we always do, and historical battles, which are single player. This is going to be something quite incredible, and I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. I can't wait to get my hands on this again, so I'm able to play a lot more of this. Learn how to get around that small learning curve of the new elements in the campaign map, so I'm not actually starving and dying all the time, which is always an advantage in these types of games, and learning about all the characters as well, and how I can use them to my advantage on the battlefield. And also, just having some fun in multiplayer and co-op campaigns with characters just battling against each other, I think that'll be absolutely awesome. But thank you so much for watching, but if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content like this. But until then guys, I will see you in the next one.